Hey YouTube, this video is about something that I did and what took place as the end result of the speed sensor on one of the wheels of the 2000 Suburban I'm working on. Alright, so here's what the problem was. First of all, they had taken the fuses, they removed the fuses out of, an a out of the ABS sensor so the sensor didn't work. Now what happened was when the fuses were out of the sensor and I got into the truck, the truck drove normally, I stepped on the brakes, everything was fine when I took it for a ride. When I put the fuses back into the truck for the ABS uh, system, the, um, every time you went to step on the pedal, you would get this pulsating because the pump would come on. And the problem with that is when I came back from the ride with the fuses in, I almost ran into my garage door because the truck wouldn't stop because it kept pulsating and to thinking that it was the, the wheels were spinning. So let me just give you an idea of what I did. Alright, so this is what I'm going to call the exciter, which is behind the rotor on your car. Okay? I'm not going to sit here and draw all these little freaking pits in here, but take it for granted that these go all the way around here. Okay? So that's what I'm going to call the exciter. This is attached to the shaft that drives the wheel, okay, next to the CV shaft and stuff. Uh, it goes through this thing. All right. So here's what I found. The, the, the sensor, and this is on a Chevy, looks something like this. All right, where there's a bolt hole through here. I'm just going to throw the head of a bolt there. And on the bottom of it, there's a little magnet. Now, what this video was about, two wires coming off of it. What this video was about is about this air gap in here. And I'm going to tell you what I found out. Doing some research, I discovered that on a Hall effect sensor, the ideal uh, distance of air gap is somewhere, let me write this right, it's somewhere between 30 thousandths and 60 thousandths okay, of an inch. Somewhere between 30 thousandths and 60 thousandths is what this air gap is. Now here's the thing. When I took the sensor off of the truck for the first time, there were three of these shims underneath there. Okay, I hope you can see that. Three of these. Okay? And I measured them. And the thickness of these, two of them were ten thousandths, and one of them was twenty thousandths. Okay? So that gave me forty thousandths. Now, when I measured from the, hub, from the frame that contains the exciter, in other words, that peephole where the sensor goes, when I looked in there and I measured from the flat spot down, what I ended up with was, um, I measured that and it came out to be 0 0.770, okay? That's from the flat spot to the first tooth or one of the teeth on the exciter. So, 770. When I took and measured from the bottom of the Hall effect sensor where it actually bolts to this piece and to the magnet, I ended up with um, 0 0.750. Okay? So there's 20 thousandths of an inch difference there. Now, if I added 40 thousandths to that, that would take that 20 thousandths plus 40 thousandths and make it 60 thousandths. However, I'm not positive if this is what Chevy figured out or what the design of the Hall effect sensor was. So I'm going to assume that it's somewhere between 30 and 60. 60 is too much, 30 is too close, or, you know, this is where I'm at. But let me just tell you what happened. So anyway, with these sensors and these shims on here, I get in the truck, I keep getting this pulsating. Time after time after time, I kept getting the pump coming on. So what I did was, I took the sensor out, measured these spacers, okay, and I made it the least I could do that was better 
than 20,000. Remember, it was 750 to 770, the difference. So that gave me 20,000. And I added a 10,000 10, shim to it, and I ended up with 30,000. I put this the sensor back in. I put the one shim under there of 10,000, which gave me a 30,000 air gap. And I drove that truck for half an hour out there on the road, stopping probably 50 freaking times. Not once did the pump come back on. Now, let me just explain this to you. Yesterday, now that was this morning, all, all this took place this morning. Yesterday, I took the sensor out, cleaned it, took the shims all off and tossed them, and put the sensor back in, and I was not getting any pulsating. So that was on the driver's side, okay? I came back and figured, well, I'll do the same thing to the passenger side. The only difference was when I put the shims in, when I put these shims in, I coated them with some dielectric grease so that nothing would rust. And apparently that gave me just enough distance away from the, the air gap to increase it enough where when I got back in the truck and took it for a ride, it was doing the same thing again. The pump kept coming on. So this morning, I took that off, that the passenger side one off, and I measured it, and I got this 30,000. So I knew I absolutely had 30,000 of an air gap. Got in the truck, not one problem. So, what do I... I'm not giving you facts other than what what I just told you was factual about what I did. Whether this 30,000 to 60,000 is a true number, I don't know. But if 60,000 is too much and that's stopping it from working, then this would make sense that if you made it closer, if the magnet was somehow wearing out or I don't know what happened to it or, or the uh, windings that are in there are getting weak for some reason, which I don't understand why, it seemed logical to me that if you made it 30,000 or even 40,000 that you would have a better chance of this thing working. When I did this, again, I got in the truck, drove all over the place, had no problem with this. Now I'm going to take it for another ride, but what I'm tired of is I'm sick and tired of these videos where guys tell you, oh, this is how you replace this. Nobody ever tells you whether it fixed the freaking problem. Very few guys, I should say. And I'm not one of them. I don't like that. Alright? All that is is annoying. Telling me how to take a bolt out and pull a plug and put the plug back in does not help. What helps is when you tell me that it solved the problem. So, here's what I'm saying to you. If you have the tools, and I needed a dial indicator that has a long stem on it that I could push down inside that hole, Make sure you're measuring to the top of a clean tooth. Wipe one off with a rag or something down in there. I'm telling you that when I set that thing to 30 thousandths, I had no problem whatsoever with any of what the braking was doing, any of that ABS crap. So, guys, it's just something I did, something that worked, and now there's no problem. I, and one thing you should know is I did not have an ABS code. There were no codes anywhere. Okay, nothing showed up on the on the uh, screen. It just wasn't working properly. Now this had been rusted as well, and I cleaned the rust off yesterday, put it back together with the shims that were in it originally, and I still had a problem. This morning I measured it, adjusted the shim height to get thirty thousand, and I don't have a problem. So apparently there is a distance in there that doesn't seem to be being told to anybody, okay? And that distance makes a major difference. So again, if you have the ability to live with a, a caliper, measure these or a small micrometer, you can measure these. They are different sizes. Two of them were ten thousandths, one of them was twenty thousandths. And actually where they were rusted, they were two to five thousandths thicker than if you measured them where they were not rusted. So, guys, it's something I found out. It's, it's working. I took the truck out three times this morning, shut it off, made sure that whatever the computer was going to reset itself, it would do. And as far as I'm concerned, that's fixed.
because I'm not having the ABS pump come on. So it's just a little something that you might want to consider. I know it seems like I'm going out of my mind when, when you really look at this and let me look at some of the numbers there. When you really look at this, it's almost like being anal. But you guys who used to work on cars with points in them, remember when we had to get them between 16 and 18 thousandths, how many freaking times we had to put a feeler gauge in there to try and accomplish that goal? Well, I think this is the same thing. I believe that these sensors being too far out or too far in, I mean, they didn't make it just any length for the heck of it. Somebody had to design the length and why. And I'm just saying that this is what I'm seeing. So it's possible that, and the, the bearings had been replaced on this truck about a year ago from what I understand, it's possible that this diameter could be slightly different than the original and that could have caused a difference in, you know, what the effect was. Because the guy said that when they put the new wheel bearings on, this problem stopped, but it came back within a month, slowly creeping back to be, you know, the problem that it is. Why, I have no idea, other than I said there was rust underneath here. But, you know, even that rust, if, if the rust alone can measure, can, if rust on metal can move a sensor enough to make it not work, then we should not be just sticking them in there just to stick them in. We should be using uh, veneer calipers to measure, or vernier, whatever the heck the word is, to measure that to get the right distance. That's why these shims come in the pack with the sensor. Alright guys, I talked enough. Have a good one. I hope this helps. Any questions, put them in the comments. Bye.